the Lean District SSPA Task Force. Um, <coughs> as usual, I have a script to go through, so um, please bear with me. Um, so, oh, and just to introduce myself, I'm Ed Joseph, the, the chair of the task force. So to conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by the Freedom of Information Act and the emergency ordinance, the Lee District SSPA task force needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. First, because each member of the task force is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and in an appropriate volume for all the other members. Accordingly, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each task force member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. And of course, it's perfectly acceptable to just say you're, you're at home. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we'll, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. <coughs> so starting with the roll call, uh, Robert Livingstone. Robert Livingstone, home. Thank you. Carol Allen. Carol Allen at home. Thanks. Rand Pixa. Rand Pixa at home. Thank you. Uh, Pamela, uh, Andy Bernick, uh, alternate. Don't expect him. Uh, Pamela Pineros. Pamela Pineros, home. Thank you. And your alternate, Leslie Hatch. Moving on, Leah Lamba Skidmore. Leah Lamba Skidmore at home. Thank you, Larry Dempsey. Larry Dempsey at home. Thank you, Jane Kelly. Didn't see Jane's name. Jane, are you with us? Moving on, Jeff Safel. Sona at home. And <clears throat> hello, Jeff, and hello, Sona. Okay, thank you, Tom Rickard. Tom Rickard at home. Thank you, Cindy Potter. Cindy Potter at home. Thank you. Um, Jim Drinkard. I didn't see Jim's name. Jim, are you with us? I received a message from Jim uh, declining uh, the invitation. <clears throat> He, he was one of the two declines we received. Okay. Uh, somehow I didn't have a record of that. Okay. And, and um, Rose, Rose, Rosemary has joined and she, she's been uh, a, a here. I don't panelist know what to do. <laughs> well, Rosemary, as it happens, next on my list, Rosemary Clay. I can't hear you. You cannot hear me, Rosemary? I'm here. I can't hear you. <laughs> can, can you hear me? No. What are you saying? Change well, you answered. Okay. Okay, I can hear you now. Can, you bit. can hear me now. Good. All right. Good. And alternate Liz Murphy? No. Uh, You'll be here and at home. listening today, tonight. I'm sorry? She's listening in tonight. Okay. I'm voting. Right. I, I know. Only one of you can vote. Uh, Holly Doherty. Holly Doherty. Holly. I'm here. Thank you. Okay. You're at home. <clears throat> Where are you, Holly? I am at home. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Don Tennant. Don. I didn't see Don's name. Moving think, on, uh, Carl. Don was the Don was the second person who uh, declined the invitation. Okay, uh, Carl Sell. <clears throat> Carl. 
Carl, can you hear me? See, we have Carl here three times on my list. Carl, can you hear us? Yes, I get an echo. Okay. <clears throat> but you're able to hear? Can you can you state your name and your location, Carl, please? Can you help me? Is is it pot Maybe it's because you you're signed on multiple times. I'm not sure. Can you, Carl, can you state your name and your location? We'll come back to Carl. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. you. Can you please state your name and your location? I can't, I can't hear, hear well because, because there's an echo. echo. Right. Um, I'm not hearing an echo. I think it might be on your end, maybe related to you being signed on multiple, you know, three different ways. So you need to be muted on at least two of those. Otherwise, that's probably going to cause the echo. I don't know what to do. Sign off on, just sign on once, not three times. We'll come back to you. Moving on with the roll call, Carol Allen. I'm, no, okay. I'm sorry, I already got, sorry. I'm looking in the wrong place. Yeah, Marta Morrissey. Marta Morrissey at home. <clears throat> Thank you, Marta. Steve Levinson. Steve Levinson at home and downtown beautiful Springfield. <laughs> Beautiful downtown Springfield. Okay. And I'm here at home. Uh, Tom Sachs. Tom Sachs at home in Springfield, in Franconia. Thank you. Jim McCracken. I didn't see Jim's name. Are you with us, Jim? Or alternate, alternates Juliana Sharp or Rachel Dexter. I think we do have Rachel. Rachel, can you state your name and your location? Rachel Dexter and Rolf Whitener at home. Thank you. <clears throat> John Tomko. John Tomko at home. Thank you. Richard Dresner. You're with us, Richard. Moving on. Uh, John Gagnon. Gannon. John, are you there? I'm here. John Gannon at home. Very good. Thank you. And going back to Carl. Carl, can you please state your, your name and your location? Carl, can you please state your name and where you are? She's just out of it. Yeah. Carl Sell, I'm at home. Thank you. Home. Very good. Thank you. Success. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 13, 14, 15, 16, Okay, we've got 19. Well more than our quorum of 12. 
So we're in business. Very good. All right. At this point, I'm going to pass the gavel to Vice Chair Tom Sachs so that I can be heard to make some necessary motions. Tom, take it away. Do I hear any motions from the floor? Yes. Uh, I move that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of the Lee District SSPA Task Force. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? The measure, the, the motion is carried. Thank you. Are there any Next, other motions move, from the floor? <clears throat> yes, thank you. Next, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for the task force to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. And that as such, the Freedom of Information Act's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of the task force and the physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that the task force may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line and that the public may access this meeting <coughs> by registering through the meeting link on the track a plan amendment page of the SSPA website at https colon slash slash www.fairfaxcounty.gov slash planning dash development slash plan dash amendments slash SSPA slash South slash track dash plan dash amendment or by calling 1-844-621-3956 and entering access code 2341-192-4030. It is so moved. Second, Ed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? The motion is carried. Thank you. And third, I move that this meeting must be conducted online during the current emergency in order to discharge the lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities of the Lee District SSPA task force. Is there, is there a second? This is John, I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? The motion is carried. Thank you. I'll take back the virtual gavel. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Uh, next, uh, members were provided with a draft of the minutes from our meeting of November 15th. The minutes were drafted by our secretary, Leah Landis Skidmore. I made a few clarifications before sending them out to membership. Thank you to Leah for the hard work of drafting the minutes. Uh, unless there are any suggested changes, I will now entertain a motion to approve the minutes. This is John, I'll move to approve. Is there a second? This is Steve, second. Second. Okay, uh, all in favor of the motion to approve the minutes, please say aye, aye or yes. Aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Um, Cindy, Cindy Potter, I abstain because I didn't attend the meeting. Very good, thank you. <coughs> um, all right, motion carries, minutes are approved. Um, so next is a, a update regarding the Van Dorn TSA. Um, substantial portion of the properties along Oakwood Drive, which were owned by the Clark, have now been sold to Kettler. This has resulted in a delay in the preparation of the traffic study for which we are waiting before continuing 
our consideration of the proposed Van Dorn TSA amendment. Because of this delay, our meeting on January 3rd has been canceled, uh, though that date will be used for a meeting of the Lee District Land Use Committee. Um, there is, though there is no guarantee, the hope is that the traffic study will be completed in time for our consideration at our meeting of January 24th, which is our next meeting after tonight. So tonight, uh, we'll, be re we'll return to our consideration of the proposed Brandon Avenue Amendment. Uh, staff will recap our discussion from November 15th and uh, I think present their analysis of where we're at. Uh, the nominator will then make a presentation, uh, followed by a period for public questions and comments, and then discussion by the task force. Ultimately, tonight we will vote on whether or not the task force wants to recommend that the proposed amendment, which of course would provide for self-storage as a secondary use to the adjacent hotel, uh, will vote on whether we recommend that that go forward or not. If the task force recommends that the amendment go forward, then we will return to this at a later date to draft recommended plan language. On the other hand, if the task force votes to recommend that this proposed amendment not go forward, then that will end our discussion of the proposed Brandon Avenue Amendment. So that's it. Um, <coughs> so I will now uh, turn things over to staff. Uh, is it David Stimson who's going to take the lead? Yes. Yes, Ed, I, I will, okay. I will okay. provide us an overview. Just... All right. Well, David, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Can everyone uh, see my screen? Yes, yes we can. Yes. Wonderful. Great, thanks. Um, good evening, I'm uh, David Stenson with the Department of Plan and Development and also with us this evening are Laura Arsenault, Steve Waller, Elizabeth Haig, and Doug Losher, also from the Department of Plan and Development along with Farouk Hezagen and Tom Burke from the, from the Department of Transportation. As Ed, Ed, Ed previously has, ju has just told us um, this evening, we will continue to review the proposed plan amendment for 6235 and 6245 Brandon Avenue. Um, this evening's presentation will provide a brief overview of the nomination for members of the public that are just joining us in the process, as well as a debrief of the last task force meeting on November 15th followed by a brief presentation from the nominator. We will then um, take questions and comments from the public, which will be followed by a task force vote on the proposed self-storage use. After the vote, we will review the potential next steps for this proposed plan amendment and conclude with the task force schedule moving forward. I'll start with a brief overview of the nomination in case there are any in attendance this evening that are not familiar with this proposed plan amendment. Um, this plan amendment was the result of a site-specific plan amendment nomination, which was submitted during the South Ca County site-specific plan amendment process. The nominator proposed a 175,000 square foot self-storage facility up to a 3.0 floor area ratio on a vacant parcel located at 6235 Brandon Avenue in the Springfield Community Business Center. Initially, staff did not support this use as it was not considered compatible with the comprehensive plan recommendations and objectives of the Springfield Community Business Center plan. However, the Leadership Tax Force and the Planning Commission recommended adding this nomination to the work program. The board um, then deferred the authorization of this plan amendment until June of 2021 so staff could conduct research on urban self-storage use to potentially address staff concerns and provide the nominator the opportunity to conduct additional community outreach. Um, the outcomes of the research demonstrated that self-storage use in other places has been able to incorporate certain design features and community benefits that are also designed by, desired by the county's comprehensive plan. Um, as just stated, the Board of Supervisors authorized this plan amendment in June of 2021, and the authorization requested that staff evaluate an option for self-storage use with community serving retail or alternative non-residential use on the ground floor up to an intensity of a 3.0 floor area ratio in conjunction with a neighborhood neighboring parcel developed with a hotel. 
Um, the options should this option should consider an innovative architecture that does not present as traditional self storage and a site layout and other measures that achieve the goals of the Springfield Community Center plan. It should be noted that um, this plan amendment will also be reviewed concurrently with an application to rezone the property. At this time, a rezoning application has not been filed. I will now provide a debrief of the last task force meeting, which was on November 15th. At the um, last task force meeting, staff continued the discussion of this plan amendment by providing an overview of the commercial revitalization goals for the Springfield Community Business Center and reviewed consensus statement with the intent to determine which community benefits are a priority to the task force. Um, these benefits included first floor use, design and architecture, streetscape, bike and pedestrian facilities, and place making and gateway features. Um, however, instead of discussing community benefits, the task force requested to take a, a poll on the statement shown in blue on the slide. And um, this statement was the premise for potential community benefits. The uh, reason the task force requested to weigh in on this statement was to express their support or opposition for the self storage use proposal. Um, I will now read the statement the task force took a poll on for those calling into the meeting. Um, given the challenges of the site, self storage as a use could positively impact the surrounding area, depending on the type of community benefits it can bring. Um, Hold the task force re, um, regarding the statement and then ask those that opposed it to type red in the chat function, those in support to type green, and those that neither supported or opposed the self storage use to type yellow. Um, seven members of the task force were opposed, five were in favor, and five did not support or oppose it. Um, the task force mem members that opposed it stated the self storage use is out of character with the Springfield CBC and does not enhance the community and and believed um, and believe the community benefits will not offset the negative impacts. They also stated the owners of the property should wait until the commercial real estate market improves before pursuing development. Um, task force members and support stated the subject property has never attracted investment and the self storage proposal could be a good interim use if there is community input regarding the design and community benefits. They also stated this type of facility could be utilized by small businesses and the first floor space could provide an opportunity for uses that benefit the community. Um, task force members that neither supported nor opposed the self storage use stated the architecture proposed by the nominator is not compatible with the Springfield CBC, but that compatible architecture and community benefits could make self storage use more palatable. And the self storage proposal is an improvement over existing conditions. Um, I will now I would like to offer the opportunity for Lynn Strobel and Kathy Taylor, who represent the nominator, to provide a brief um, presentation regarding the self-storage proposal. Yeah, Bef before we get to the nominator, I just wanna add that uh, there were about seven members in that meeting on November 17th, November 15th, who, who did not indicate anything at all. So in addition to the five who were in the yellow category, there were about seven members by my count who, who just did not contribute to that discussion. So for whatever that's worth, I thought I'd throw that in as well. All right. Um, so uh, Lynn and Kathy, take it away. Um, okay, Kathy is uh, gonna present tonight, so I'll defer to Kathy. Thanks, Lynn. And good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Kathy Taylor from the law firm of Walsh Colucci. Um, I am joined uh, by Zach Linford. Hopefully you can hear him. I was hoping he could make sure he could be heard before we. Hello. Can you hear me, Kathy? I can. can we, we can hear you. Great. Great. And Zach um, represents a developer of this project. So in the middle of the presentation, he will provide some information that should hopefully provide some insight into the economic benefit as well as the clientele that will be a, um, this, this self storage use would attract. Um, so it is a pleasure to be here. We know that we've been here before and at the last me meeting, there were quite a few questions and comments as you saw from uh, David's last slide about the self storage use itself uh, being proposed at this location. Thus, we did wanna take some time during this presentation to provide you all with a brief refresher of the proposal. 
and what we hope is helpful information as to why we do believe this use is appropriate for this site specifically. So I'm gonna go ahead and share um, my screen. Okay, can everybody see this? We can see it. Great, and I'm going to start from the beginning. All right, there we go. So the purpose here in this slide, um, you, I'm sure all of you are very, very, very well familiar with this site. Um, and, and here I just wanted to kind of highlight again the location, which is tucked away behind the town place suites and is, is adjacent to I-395. As mentioned, the, the subject property was rezoned together with the adjacent hotel. And this parcel specifically, what I also wanted to highlight, was approved for a freestanding restaurant back in 2000, but was never built. And so, as we've heard a number of times, the subject property has remained empty for decades and currently remains vacant. So, again, just wanted to provide um, some pictures of the, uh, of the site itself. As you can see, it's empty. Um, there are no pedestrian amenities along Augusta. And though it was approved for a freestanding restaurant over 20 years ago, the use was never established. And so the current comprehensive plan, as you all know, for this parcel recommends an office use up to 125,000 square feet with a maximum building height of 160 feet. So before proceeding to discuss the actual proposed self storage use, we wanted to highlight the potential uses and the challenges that this site poses to establishing uh, various other uses. So, as I mentioned before, um, the graphic to the left, you can see that the site that's starred is at the periphery of land unit A, and it's, a, in, um, it's also physically located, as you can see, as well to um, I-395. So, if you look to the chart on the right, here are various uses that could be put on the site um, office, which is the current plan recommendation. Unfortunately, there is no market for office space at this time. Um, and, and I think even moving into the future after the pandemic, though, that market will not uh, really get any better. And the value of the land cannot support structured parking. So office would not be appropriate on this, on this property. And then we have the restaurant, which is the approved use, but has remained unbuilt. And that remains undesirable because there is no visibility. And that would be the case if um, you would try to establish traditional retail on this site. And then finally, residential is not appropriate for this site due to its close proximity to the interstate, as well as the difficulty to integrate with surrounding non-residential uses. So this leads us to the proposal at hand, which presents an opportunity to amend the comprehensive plan to allow this empty parcel to be developed into an attractive multi-story urban self-storage use that will be 100% climate controlled and will include active ground floor uses that will create and support a pedestrian centric environment. So we heard a lot of comments uh, previously at the last task force meeting that this use was being forced, so to speak, upon the committee members and essentially would not impart the appropriate plan goals of the area if established. So as David uh, mentioned, this proposed amendment has been pending for quite some time. I'll remind the task force that this nomination was accepted into the county's SSPA process back in January of 2020. And while the design of the building, as you see in this slide right now, has been tweaked in close collaboration with the Springfield Civic Association, since that time, the core of the nomination, uh, which is what we're, we're proposing, as you can see on the left-hand side, the text, um, to introduce a self-storage facility on the parcel has not changed. And the nominators team presented this self-storage nomination to the task force committee back in August of 2020 for evaluation. At that time, the task force recommendation by a 14 to six vote in favor was to include the nomination in the plan amendment work program as proposed and no modifications were included. As David mentioned, it was also recommended favorably by the Planning Commission and was ultimately approved by the Board of Supervisors to be included in the plan amendment work program to consider the option for self storage. At this point, it has been a, near, a nearly two year process. 
And as a nominators team has moved forward in the SSPA process, we do believe this use would greatly benefit the community and be compatible with the goals of the Springfield CDC, as we will discuss in a few slides. And a big contributing factor to that is due to its urban design, as this is not your typical industrially located self storage use. And again, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more when, um, when Zach presents. So a quick note about this design that you see on this slide. While this is an architectural design that we've worked in close collaboration with the community on, based on additional input that we've heard over these past few meetings, we are open to keeping the, the conversation going about the design aspects of the project and continue to refine it at, at such time when we would go through the rezoning. Um, this would be a point that you know, we would continue to work on with the community as well as work on with staff. So, in short, a recommendation of the plan amendment now does not mean approval of the design aspects that you are looking at for the proposal today. So, moving on to the next slide, despite having an office building appearance, the community would still gain the benefit of introducing a very low impact use into its neighborhood. So, one of the biggest benefits, as you can see from this slide, is that self storage remains a very low traffic generator in comparison to other possible uses. So, as you can see, the self storage use in comparison to a contemplated office use or the restaurant use, which are uh, shown in blue and green, would be uh, significantly lower, uh, as you can see with the yellow bar graph. So, on this next slide, another way to look at the traffic impact is to highlight that the use would typically only result in one, uh, one trip per hour. Other benefits include um, that self storage generally maintains a low parking requirement, but would main but would continue to be a community serving use serving the area within a 3 to 5 mile radius. In addition, self storage, the self storage use would have a low impact on local resources as it generates minimal use of surrounding roads, utilities, such as sewer power, water, public services and a marginal impact on schools. So, at this point, I am going to turn it over to. My colleague Zach, who's part of the developers team, Secure Space. And you've seen that I'm sure reference in these slides over, over the past several meetings. Zach will talk in more detail as to who the clientele is that this use would attract, why self-storage and specifically Secure Space's model of self-storage makes sense in this on this site and will in fact promote commerce and enhance vitality in the downtown Springfield area. So Zach, I will turn it over to you. Great, thank you, Kathy, and thank you everybody for joining us this evening. I'm Zach Winford. I'm one of the partners uh, at Secure Space, the developer. Um, we've done more than 100 of these projects around the country, uh, and typically we target a uh, an urban uh, self storage user um, that is different than the sort of older school model. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that today. So. Um, we, we were, when this site was brought to our attention, something that stood out to us is there is very high local demand for self storage uh, in Springfield. We measure this using a proprietary tool that lets us see how many people are searching online uh, for self storage within a three and five mile radius. Three miles typically contains 80% of our total customer base um, in any of our locations around the country. Uh, and 8,000 is a number that stood out to us. Um, despite that, uh, I think Kathy in a previous presentation perhaps has shared that, um, you know, the, the self storage of locally is nearly completely full and residents have seen uh, 10 to 15 percent price increases in self storage uh, locally over the last three years. So, in addition to, you know, being a market where we think there's lots of demand um, locally that will support a facility, uh, generally 10 percent of households use self storage at any given time. Um, we focus on climate controlled only units. Those typically attract a higher uh, income consumer tenant. So these are people who are storing, um, you know, decorations from their homes, uh, folks that are clearing out to make some extra space uh, to work at home uh, or educate their children. Um, and 80% of the customers that I mentioned come from that sort of three to five mile and are typically uh, majority are fam uh, single family homeowners, which surprises people when we, we share that. Um, you, Think maybe homeowners would have a little extra garage space, but that's our bread and butter uh, for our urban storage user. Uh, the majority are female, so the female, uh, you know, typically making the buying decision. Um, hence, our brand. We're known for 
uh, our high security, uh, well lit, brand new facilities um, that everybody can feel comfortable coming to. And then the second largest cohort of our tenant base are small business owners, uh, typically record storage, uh, small inventory, um, parts, uh, et cetera. Um, but, you know, we don't have uh, dry book units. This is not uh, small business owners that are going to come in and, um, you know, collect or, or work out of these spaces uh, necessarily. Um, we could flip to the next slide. So, in addition to the, the type of customers that typically use this, um, when we're looking at the anticipated economic benefit of the self storage facility. So, in general, uh, when self storage arrives, you know, it's not that exciting product type sort of fades into the background in terms of land use. Um, you know, it's phenomenal uh, in terms of how low of an impact it does make on the community. Lynch and, and uh, Kathy have shared the, the traffic, et cetera. Uh, but outside of being quiet um, and sort of fitting into neighborhoods, uh, it does drive a lot of economic benefit locally. So we anticipate making an investment of between 16 and 18 million dollars in the initial construction of the self storage building. As Kathy mentioned, you know, we're certainly open to still working on the aesthetic um, and, and have tried to accommodate as, as many voices as we can in that. Um, the production of up to 88 direct and 155 indirect jobs during construction is pulled uh, directly from the Economic Policy Institute for a project of this size. And upon completion, up to 10 direct and indirect employment opportunities will arise as well, both from staffing the facility, uh, security, uh, maintenance, um, on, on, on and so forth. Uh, the property will generate roughly $300,000 of direct revenue per year to the county. Uh, majority of that is in property taxes. And then further tax generation and local economic support um, will create up to uh, rather will support up to 105 direct jobs during construction and operations uh, at full completion. Um, go ahead, Doug. Thank you. You can switch to the next one. I saw you going there. So something interesting we're doing here, and I know you've seen and contemplated in the plan, is we are integrating uh, small retail business spaces uh, in the bottom floor. And these spaces right now in our model are sort of flex. We're working with the community to get community feedback. Um, we spoke with the Chamber of Commerce, trying to get some ideas for what they thought would be a great use here. Uh, we would love to see, um, you know, small retail, something like, could we get an ice cream parlor or something in there? They would drive, drive folks to it, uh, make it a destination and pull them into that corridor. Um, Regardless, the goal is to support local entrepreneurs with these spaces uh, in other facilities that we've designed and built around the country. Uh, we have uses that include retail. Uh, we have gallery space. We have artists, small art working spaces. Um, and the, the photos at the bottom right here are from our, our facility in Camarillo, California. Uh, we have an architect. We have an artist studio that does um, painting uh, lessons. Um, we have a technology consulting firm. Uh, and those those spaces have been utilized 100% since we opened the facility. So typically, you know, not just as a concession, but as a mechanism to drive um, people to the facility, drive awareness, uh, and also get the you know a, a positive engagement from the community. We do like to make these spaces available. Um, they're on the first floor, and and again in the in the plan, I think you've seen uh, the mock-ups of of the type of businesses that we would love to attract. Um, so uh, these are some of the examples of the spaces that we've integrated uh, in Hawaii. Uh, on the top left there, we have small retail spaces. Um, those are uh, featured native uh, Hawaiian art. In the top right, Richmond, California, uh, we have artist studios um, that the community can reserve. Uh, in the bottom left there, we have the Camarillo, California facility that I just showed you that had the pictures on the previous page. And then on the bottom right there, that's a facility in Long Beach um, with integrated actual office space uh, on the top uh, second and, and third floor. That's a, a large facility. So we're flexible. We like to work with the community to understand what the needs are um, and what they would like to see there. The feedback we've heard in general um, from Springfield residents has been, uh, you know, we'd love to see some small local uh, retail um, and or uh, space for uh, community services, uh, potentially, um, uh, even for the city itself. So um, that's a little bit more about the type of customers that we anticipate bringing in and uh, some of the uses that we'd like to see applied to the bottom floor. 
Great, thanks, Zach. And one thing I will highlight on this slide, and, and Zach can elaborate if he feels the need to, with the Camarillo site that you see there on the bottom uh, left corner, from what I understand, the, the spaces that are currently there have remained 100% occupied. So I know there was concern before about, well, you could have the retail spaces, but they may be left unused. And I think that's part of, you know, secure spaces model is to really ensure that they find they do the research, they work with the community to find what spaces or what type of uses would integrate with the community and would be workable and, and sort of continue to drive that um, pedestrian oriented environment. So I think that that's something that, that's great that this developer specifically does and will integrate into, um, into the model that they're looking to put in here in Springfield. Yeah, Kathy, and, and knowing we've taken quite a bit of time, I'll just, just the, the stamp on that one is you're absolutely right. You know, those spaces are very popular. Um, we typically subsidize the rents uh, for the first couple of years. Um, you know, something we've talked to the chamber about as well was even doing a grant, helping a business start up. Uh, but, but, you know, we have, we have um, uh, Camarillo Highway Patrol uh, uses a, a space there. I mean, we're, we're creative and engaging the community. We want to see those spaces utilized, um, and typically, once once things get rolling, it's not a challenge to uh, to keep people engaged, particularly when they can come in, use a smaller space. You know, as Kathy said at the beginning, office space here in this market um, with a traditional floor plan and trying to rent tens of thousands of square feet probably not going to going to find takers. But when you're looking at smaller spaces um, and supporting small businesses that can come in and and potentially get a um, you know concession from us, get supported, uh, get off the ground. Um, you know it's a it's a it's an easy fill. Great, thanks. So um, kind of transitioning into what we were just talking about with community outreach, uh, there were some questions that we heard before about outreach to both the residential as well as the business community. So I quickly wanted to just highlight. Um, so that some of the community outreach that we have engaged in. Um, so in terms of the former, to make sure we were integrating a use that the community could stand behind in terms of architecture and design, our team did take significant strides to meet with the closest residential community to the site, which was this, the Springfield Civic Association. And briefly, I wanted to highlight those outreach efforts that we took to collaborate with the SCA on the design and, in, and ensure that it was um, a use that they could see fit within the fabric of downtown Springfield area. So you can see here the various meetings we had with the SEA board starting in March. Um, working with the board, we did provide them with a virtual walking tour of the Camarillo site that you saw um, in the previous slide. And then a few, um, a couple months after that, you know, we engaged in, in various working charrettes with the SEA um, group. And then ultimately, we did present this proposal and the refined design to the broader SCA community on June 3rd. Um, and at that, um, at the end of the meeting, we we conducted a straw poll that was distributed to all the attendees to obtain their feedback on this proposal. And I'll um, list some of the highlights that you can see here from those results, where 82% of the attendees did not see this proposal as a loss opportunity. Approximately two thirds of the attendees indicated a preference for a seven story self storage building over an empty lot. And then 70% of the attendees believe self storage is compatible with the existing businesses and would make an acceptable gateway feature for downtown Springfield. So 55% of the attendees disagree with the statement that self storage only belongs in an industrial area. And approximately two thirds of the attendees believe that self storage will encourage more businesses to invest in the area. So, in the end, the broader community response was quite positive, which we were encouraged about. And based on this feedback, we believe the urban self storage model we are introducing with this proposal remains a desirable use on this parcel and that the majority of the community agrees would attract visitors as well as commerce into the surrounding area. And finally, I will note, um, as Zach also mentioned, we did give a presentation before the board of the Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce a couple of weeks ago on um, December 6 to introduce the proposal and answer their questions. At that time, we didn't hear any major concerns, nor did we receive any objections to this proposal during our discussion with that group. 
So to summarize, we are, as we've mentioned, we um, are developing an underutilized vacant site that's currently producing no economic value. It has been vacant for decades now and several zoning accommodations to stimulate, to stimulate the use have failed. So as Zach mentioned, um, based on their uh, intensive market research, there is a high demand for storage where more than 80,000 local residents, specifically in the Springfield area, search for self-storage monthly. However, there is a, also a low supply of storage, which has led to price increases of greater than 12% per year. So we are providing uh, what we believe is a desirable and attractive solution, which is a climate controlled, high quality self storage building, integrating neighborhood retail and or community uses that would generate economic benefit to the Springfield area. And finally, as you heard, secure space is a top operator who focuses on security and safety and is one of the top rated operators in every market that it serves. So in the end, we strongly believe this proposal does present an opportunity to invest in, redevelop, and activate an underutilized parcel that has been vacant for a number of years. So upon completion, the use will be a great asset to the community, providing high quality, a high quality attractive building and site design that will foster pedestrian activity, as you saw, it would satisfy local storage demands, serve the community's needs, and ultimately promote economic investment in this portion of Springfield. So we hope this additional information has been useful. And as always, we're happy to answer any additional questions you may have. And we do request your favorable consideration as we move forward with this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yep. Um, so now we'll open it, uh, up the discussion up to uh, members of the public. Uh, anyone has a question or a comment? Um, please raise your virtual hand um, and I'm trying to remember how to do that. So if anyone can help me with the technical end, telling people how to raise your hand, I would appreciate that. Steve, anyone? Uh. I was gonna say, I think it's at the bottom of the participant. If you open up the participant and you go to the very bottom, there's a little raise hand, the third one in from the uh, right. Down by the uh, chat option. It's under the three little dots. There's one, two, three dots. Under the three little dots. Oh, okay. I'm not seeing it myself. Um, on, on your um, bottom, your, your, at the very bottom of your picture screen right now, there's a red X and just to the left of the red X, there's three dots. Oh, those three dots. I was looking at a different set of three dots. Okay, good. I think yes. that's it. Mine doesn't say that. Mine's over under the- No. Mine's under, if you open up the participants. Um, if you there it is. Okay. Scroll to the bottom. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So if you click on participants and then at the <clears throat> at the bottom of that participants box, there are three icons off to the right, and this is the leftmost of those three icons. It's a little hand, a little hard to see, uh, but if you click there, you will raise your virtual hand, and we can call on you. So thank you for the guidance, Jana, and uh, floor is open to members of the public. Right now, the only hand I'm seeing raised is uh, Rachel Dexter's hand. Yeah. But, but she's. Okay. Uh, can I go I'm ahead and not, ask the question? I'm not seeing that, but I, I guess Rachel, go right ahead. Uh, my question was just on the slide you shared about the community input that it said two thirds saw benefit 87%. How many total attendees did you have at that event? that replied to that survey. Thanks. I would have to look back on the actual numbers. I believe we had, um, gosh, roughly 
around 20 community members. Um, but if you give me a minute, I can go back and get you uh, the exact numbers that were there. And that was a mixture of the SCA board members who are obviously part of the community as well as um, the, the, the broader SCA um, members um, of, that, of that group. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else from the public with a question or a comment? I'm not seeing any hands. Uh, Gail, uh, Gail, Niddle, Gail, anyone? Niddle, Gail Niddle has her hand raised. So I'm, I'm, I'm unmuting her for, for you. Thank you. Well, I don't thank know why you, you're Randy. seeing it when I'm not, but thank you, Steve. Yes, go ahead, Gail. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for asking that question. Um, I think Kathy's correct. It was somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 people that were on that survey. And that that is a point I wanted to make out uh, make tonight. Um, there was not the community participation that I would have liked to have seen. We all would have liked to have seen. But I think that uh, the bottom line is this community is still very conflicted in uh, how it feels about having that self-storage unit there. The presenter has been very cooperative and very eager to work with the community, uh, but there are just some very strong feelings. The emails that we've received have been very, um, very split. Those who are against it are very against it, and those who are for it are kind of okay. Uh, we'll give it a chance and see. Uh, even even the vote that we took on our board, as Marta will um, explain a little later was very split, very divided. So Gail, um, could you just take a moment to mention who which organization you represent when, when Yes, I'm which, sorry. Who you're referring Civic, to when you say we? Springfield Civic Association. Thank you. Yep, sorry about that. So that's that's the only comment. It's still a very divisive issue. Um Zach has been wonderful. Kathy's been very cooperative in explaining it as that it can be explained. It's just a basic feeling of whether people want it in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Steve, are you seeing any other hands? Could I respond to that comment? Not right now. Oh, sure, go right ahead. Which I appreciate uh, Gail's candor in terms of, you know, how the community feels about this, this project. And as I had alluded to in the presentation, um, you know, the, the, we still have to go through the rezoning process. And so there would continue to be community engagement, community comment, community input for us to really kind of work through um, a lot of the details of this. So, so a vote of recommendation at this point, as we mentioned, would not be Kind of setting in stone what you see with the proposal. I think that there would be another bite of the apple, so to speak. You know, we would continue that discussion. And so, I, while I can that there are still some differing, you know, opinions, people on the fence, you know, people not sure where they stand on this. Um, there is some time to to continue that discussion and that conversation. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Anyone else? From the public, which is to make it ask a question or make a comment. Steve, are you seeing any hands? I see Tom Sachs' hand. I don't know if other people can see that. Well, Tom, Tom, Tom's on the task force. We'll be getting to the task force momentarily, oh, assuming there are no other uh, Gail's, questions Gail's, or comments. Gail's hand is still up, but I didn't see if she had taken it down yet. So, but she's the okay. she's the uh, well, Gail. Speak up if there's something new you want to say, but otherwise yes, we'll I would assume like, that. I, okay. I do have another question uh, for Kathy. You said that you met with the the Springfield or the Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce. Was that? Mm -hmm. I would be interested yes. in who 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 met with you and uh, how many there were in that. So we met with the board of the um, the Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce, and I believe at the meeting, oh, I'd have to look back at exactly how many um, 
were there and, and maybe if there were others at that, there were a few from our team. I think there were under a dozen for sure. Um, maybe six or seven of their board members. It was their board. Um, and I had coordinated that with their director um, as well as the chairman of the board um, to get that meeting set up. And do you know if there were any any people in that meeting that were, were from Springfield, I mean, Central Springfield, where we're talking about this area? Um, I mean, I know it was the obviously the greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce was the of the area, but they didn't disclose um, their location or where, where each board member was from. Okay, thank you. If I could, if I could just jump in on that. Uh, Holly Doherty. Go ahead, Holly. The Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce, the Board of Directors, they're all businesses from that area, Springfield Town Center, Springfield Hilton, uh, small businesses right there in the Springfield area. Thank you, Holly. Thanks. Okay, so unless there are any other members of the public who wish to speak, we will move to the task force. Uh, and I'm not seeing any members from the public, so uh, Tom Sachs from the task force, go ahead, you're up. Tom, you're muted. I just wanted to say, I think it was very disingenuous of the staff to try and show that, that there's all this really amazing support for it. 70% of 20 people is 14 people. You know, there's a, a scattering of support among a very small group of people who are interested, which is how it is in any organization, civic association, homeowner organization. Very few people get involved. I think the developer is smoking something he thinks the small business is going to succeed in there. He's pointed out no other businesses have wanted to go in there because there's no visibility. I don't think any small business would want to go into a place where nobody can see them and just walk in on the street without a lot of activity and expense to make people aware they're, that they're there. I think we're going to end up with a building with a lot of vacant space on the ground floor because it's just not a good location. And I'll leave it at that. Can I uh, respond to that? Absolutely, go right ahead, Zach. So Tom, great comment. And, and you know, we have limited time to, to have the discussion tonight. I think that the, the uses we're open to, again, I mean, we could, we could uh, support um, office space for community organizations, uh, we can, we, we would love to find retail in there when we've talked about retail, something we don't have a lot of time to talk about tonight. Um, but we certainly can further and something we did talk about the chamber of commerce with was how do we drive traffic? How do we drive support? How do we drive eyeballs uh, into and around those stores? And while that location, um, you know, I think in, in, in and of itself, isn't going to do a great job of tracking, which is why we don't have uh, big retail. We don't have big restaurant there. Um, we do and will and, and anticipate spending an awful lot of time, money and energy marketing the property. Uh, we anticipate being able to share those benefits with any community businesses that went in there. And in terms of ideas that we've shared with uh, the Chamber of Commerce in terms of how could we support small businesses in there? You know, again, let's go back to this idea of an ice cream store or, or maybe it's, um, you know, maybe it's a, 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 a something something to that end, something that you could have a small toy store. Um, you know, our ability to supplement that with marketing budget, for instance, to say, hey, let's go ahead and uh, anybody who plays in a local sports sports league, so kids soccer, kids baseball, something like that, come down, get a free scoop, um, you know, any weekend if you show up wearing your jersey. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we can support. We can add budget to those locations. Uh, and we're completely open to suggestions, but, you know, as I've said, in other facilities, we have the, uh, the highway patrol, uh, utilizing the space. Um, you know, is it good? Is it is retail going to be the right fit there? 
Uh, we hope it is. That's what the community would like to see, and we're we're going to absolutely give it a try. But having unoccupied space on the ground floor um, of a beautiful new twenty million dollar building um, is certainly not our intention, and we're going to work hard to uh, to support so to support it to that end and find uh, appropriate uses that that can fit in there. Okay, thank you, Zach. Um, Holly Darty. Go ahead, Holly. Thank you, Ed. Sorry, I just have to get everything turned on here. But uh, we really appreciate uh, Zach's willingness to come and talk to the business community. Um, we really feel like the the choice is between leaving this spot vacant or accepting a use and moving forward with something that could benefit the community. And there are many small businesses that could benefit from such a location as, you know, as we mentioned in November, a lot of businesses use self storage as kind of an interim before they go out, get their own office space, that they need a place when to, to kind of move out of their own home, their own garage to get a little bit more space. And, and the ground floor has so many opportunities for the Springfield area that could really benefit the community. And, um, we think it could become a really exciting location. So we we support this the Mount Lee Chamber of Commerce. We support it. The Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce supports it because we feel like that this is someone who's willing to work with the community to have a design that is acceptable to the community to provide the amenities that the community wants and needs. And so we're very supportive of this proposal. Thanks, Holly. Um, unless there's a response from the nominator, we'll go to uh, Leah. Um, yeah, Leah, hi. go ahead. Okay. Um, I was. Uh, kind of looking around at the self storage areas um, in the immediate vicinity, mainly because I'm looking at uh, renting some. Um, and it is really hard to get in. And then I also noted that um, in Kingstown, they have a self storage that abuts uh, some retail, the retail area um, where Kohl's is and uh, Walmart. Um, and it's kind of nestled in with their residential area. It seemed that that area, even though it seems odd at some point, it, it's working for them. And so um, I kind of think this will f work for the greater Springfield area too, because it's, not an in your face space yet it can be a draw for people i i know i would like to have a climate controlled uh area to take some stuff um so i'm kind of looking forward to seeing something like this being developed instead of having an unused kind of trashy looking area back in springfield thanks thanks leah I uh, see there's a comment from Tom Rickard in the chat. Are there recordings? Actually, it's a question. Are there recordings of the meetings with the SCA and the Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce uh, presentation? So uh, are there recordings of those meetings? Uh, we don't have a recording of the meeting with the Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce. Um, I believe we, I would have to look back. I know we had a recording of the virtual uh, walking tour that we had with the SCA. I think um, I would have to um, speak with uh, the developers team. I can't recall now if we had recorded the working charrette um, when we had met with the SCA board, um, yep. as well as the when we met with the greater, with the broader community. I believe that may have been recorded as well, but I, I'm not 100%. I would have to double check on that. 
But if those are recordings that you're interested, if if we do end up having any of those recordings, if that's something the task force is interested in having, I'm sure we could get we could get that and pass it along. Thanks. You use the word shred. I don't know what that means. Um, it was like a work session, so we um, okay. we decided, you know, here's the design. What do you guys? How do you envision you would like to see it improved? Oh, we don't like this color. We don't like the awning, and we want to add this and that. So it's sort of just a working a work, work session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, uh, Marta Morrissey, you're up. Okay. See if I have everything on click. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Uh, yes, you know, Gail and Tom Sachs are both right that it is difficult to get as much participation as we would like to from the community in getting a reading on how they feel about this project. Um, but we did due diligence and all of our board members were very um, involved in this and did outreach. And I wanted could, could to you say who, when you refer to our board members, which organization? I'm sorry, Springfield Civic Association. Yeah, Thank and you. Gail Niddle being the president of the Springfield Civic Association. Um, and she sent this to me today. This was a vote that was taken this weekend of all of our um, elected. Well, um, it's a combined votes of the elected and ex officio board members um, took place this weekend and we felt um, that we needed to call a vote and it was a full participation of the board members. It was uh, seven voted in favor of putting the project on the plan, moving it ahead, and six voted against putting the project on the plan and moving it ahead. So it's very divided. It was a very difficult um, thing for us to vote on given you know, all the different input um, and different ideas that people had in our community. But it says it's very divided. I believe this is also a reflection of how the community in general feels from the emails and communications the SCA has received. The vote we cast tonight is a very guarded yes. We will be watching closely that promises are kept, the community respected, and that expectations to the comprehensive plan and revitalization, or excuse me, that the exceptions to the comprehensive plan and revitalization guidelines for our area are not continually made. So, um, you know, we do feel we worked as best we could in outreach with our community and our board has been very active and involved in this and we're very divided, but um, so she wanted me to read that to you all to show how this was a very, very close decision for us. Thank you for that report. Um, okay. Uh, Jonna, you're up. Um, yeah, thank you. I just wanted to follow up on Leah's comment, but I think it has a greater um, application here that <laughs> being on the, on the land use when that uh, Kingstown storage unit went in, that was kind of an interesting situation but it serves a purpose for the residential behind that or behind that storage unit place. It buffers them from the loading noise of the post office. Because the right, right, they're right across the street from the back of the post office that has all their trucks coming in and unloading. But I think it's a good point that sometimes, uh, and I was against this initially back way back when, because I didn't like the design of the storage unit in Springfield. I think it's come a long way. I think it's an example of how working together we get a better product. We may not get what we really want, but we have a better product here than I think we started with. And I think it's a good one, but I think sometimes storage units like this can serve to transition or even protect residential from some noise of 395, 95 or other things. So anyway, I, I think this has come a long way, but that's, if you've ever stood there in that storage unit, they, they back, they buffer the noise there off the post office trucks. So that's all, thank you. Thank you, Janet. All right, uh, Planning Commissioner Dan Lagana, you're up. Um, hey, Ed, and thank you to the members of the, uh, the task force. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, offer again some perspective uh, on this site. I think um, uh, 
you know, first and foremost, uh, I do want to just say I really appreciate the amount of work and thought that has gone into this from all parties. It's actually pretty, um, uh, pretty incredible. And uh, to the to the Springfield Civic Association, they really, you know, a seven six split is is a tough split, but it can be seen as division. Uh, in my perspective, though, too, a, a way to look at it would be it's also a reflection of just how I think how much work and thought that the that the association put into the into the application. So I really appreciate um, appreciate that, uh, Gail and, and Marta. Um, I think a, a few things come to mind here, you know, uh, and I'm going to try and speak not with um, without the pandemic sort of in mind. You know, demand for office has really collapsed to be candid. It just doesn't exist. Uh, you know, if it comes in, it's normally because someone is working with a tenant or they're going to uh, develop their own building. But it's very hard to, um, to envision office being successful. And the office building next door is, is frankly, I think it's about 60% occupied. I could be wrong. So it's already performing below, uh, underperforming the market, if you will. Um, and retail and lodging are also undergoing a lot of transition themselves. Um, so really what this application did when it came before myself and, and Supervisor Lusk is, you know, it, it, it prompted a question, if you will. Um, and uh, especially when uh, we started thinking about what else could be uh, used there you you open up the searching for a word here the aperture of the possible if you will you you expand your opportunities by seeing what else you could have and in our case the big the big elements were um, having an, a very clear and obvious community benefit and beautifying and improving the surrounding area um, and uh, that was really the driving force behind this we wanted, I think a lot of times we talk about innovation or doing something new. It's probably a better way to say it. And this really sort of, in my mind, fit that bill, which is why I wanted to, to test this. I do think uh, that this is, if we look at the type of applicants for self-storage, that this is the type of applicant to do that kind of, of work. And, um, we did emphasize early on that the only way this was going to be successful was through partnerships, both in terms of the design and how it's um, how it's brought through the process, but also in terms of its enduring success uh, is through partnerships. In this case, with Springfield, with SSPA, with We Land Use, and enduring with the same organizations and also with the Chambers of Commerce. Um, and then lastly, uh, the economics are such now that there's such a, a clear need for modular and um, very localized self storage that it becomes uh, part of uh, a, a, a small business's uh, success is their ability to place things, quickly go and get them and either ship them to a, a buyer uh, or deliver them very rapidly to a brick and mortar location. And because of speed and the necessity of speed too, um, many of these, of these uses uh, become more important. Um, and so I wouldn't actually be surprised if after, um, if this project is, is built, it goes through that not only are many of the the users or renters located in Springfield uh, in the surrounding areas are homeowners, but are probably small businesses located in Springfield, um, in the Springfield Plaza, in Springfield Town Center in the greater area. So um, anyways, I just wanted to leave you with that, that perspective that it was, it was the question um, and that was what prompted, uh, prompted this. So I, I really appreciate your thoughtful comments. And I thank you for all your work. Thanks, Dan. 
Um, Carl Sell has a hand up. Go ahead, Carl. Can you hear me? We can hear you, can Carl. You hear go me? right ahead. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm sure this will surprise some of you, but I'm going to support this application. I believe it uh, it can be made into something that will help the area, although nothing happening now. Uh, I'm going to be tough to deal with when we come to zoning because there's been a lot of talk about uh, helping out the public public-private partnerships and that sort of stuff, but nothing specific. There are opportunities in Springfield to to support the, the local organizations, the Springfield Art Guild, to look at the history of the area, to look at a lot of things that would be happening in this building that, that may not happen anywhere else. I don't see retail commercial on the bottom floor, but I see an opportunity for public-private partnerships to to, to forward the, the the image of Springfield, if you will, both business and community. And I hope that will happen, and I'm going to try to do everything that I can to make sure that it does happen. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Okay, so if you've already, if you raised your hand and you've already spoken, I'd ask you to click on that same button to lower your hand. And... I, I don't think we have any other hands up at this time. Um, so I will, you know, if there's anybody out there who, who wants to say anything, ask a question, make a comment, now is the time. So please raise your hand or if you're having trouble, trouble with that, just speak up. Hey, Ed, this is Steve Levinson. Do you hear me? I do hear you. Go ahead, Steve. I, I just want to have a quick second here. Um, as we go back to the history of this property and the zoning we've tried to do before, it's always been the orphan end of the uh, Springfield area. And I, I want to, without taking a lot of time tonight, I want to commend um, the, the um, people who put up these, the, these proffers and drawings. Unfortunately, I missed the last meeting and there's just been tremendous progress made um, on how this thing looks. I mean, we tried to throw Pepe de Buco in there. That failed. We, th there was a proposal for a hell port, which would have been a heck of a lot noisier and, and more um, uh, nasty for the neighborhood. Um, that failed. Um, you know, we, we've seen nothing but, but failures in on that property. Um, I, just to make it quick, I'm going to also support, like Carl, uh, this, this proposal tonight um, and, and look forward to a way to, to get this to a vote. Thanks, Steve. Is there anyone else? Okay, I'm not hearing anybody from the task force or seeing any hands from the task force, but I do see a hand from a member of the public, Diane Bouton. Uh, Diane, is there something you'd like to say? Yes, I just wanted to make a comment about the um, as this surrounding Springfield Civic Association support in this survey about it, a self storage being a good gateway feature. Um, I just wanted to voice one more time about concern about signage. And that in, in this particular case, um, I support it because it's going to hopefully will be a building that will be um, attractive and not um, detract from the area, which is why I'm, I'm still concerned about the sign because this is not just for the Springfield area, this exit that's so visible is for the Franconia, the, all the neighborhoods that are part of the Lee District Task Force. So um, I, I hope that that will still be a strong 
the signage will be a strong component that the community will have input in because it affects not just us, but the entire area. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. And uh, signage would, would, would come before the, the land use committee, uh, you know, uh, before anything gets built. Um, so there, there will be additional uh, opportunity for public input on that issue. Okay. Um, I am not seeing any other hands. So one last opportunity for anybody who wants to speak up. Not hearing any voices. Okay. So uh, we did want to move to a vote. Was there a particular question that I, I, I'm a little unclear. Did staff have a, a, a particular question that they wanted to vote on? Ed, this is Tom. I think we need to vote on whether to include it in the pro, in the plan review or not include it in the plan review. Right. That's that's where this is going, Tom. Yeah, but I. I, I I, I, was, I have some vague memory yeah, that uh, perhaps there was particular wording that that staff wanted to have a vote on. I, I, I don't, but I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly. Ed, Ed, this is uh, David Stenson again. Yes, we we did have a um a question. We were basically going to ask the same question that we voted on last, or we took a poll on at the last meeting, but this time take a yes or no vote. And I can actually bring up the um. If, PowerPoint to, to to show the question Would so you do that we can have a visual cue Thanks. as to what. Yes, Steve, can you? Um, oh, thank you. Let me just bring it up. Just give me a moment. Okay, so well, basically, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Actually, the question now is, we would like to ask a yes or no vote. Do you support self storage use on this site? And assuming that you know community benefits are provided, and and potential community benefits again could be first floor uses or design and architecture, streetscape, bike and pedestrian facilities, or possibly right. place making and gateway features. And so we looked at. It, right. So I, I think what I think another way to say that might be: Do we do do you wish for this plan amendment to go? Do 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 we wish for the task force to recommend that this plan amendment go forward in light of the proffered community benefits? Is, would that be a Another way to say the same thing. Yeah, yes, that's assuming that there are going to be community benefits as well with with this proposal. Right. <coughs> so then the question before us is. I'm just writing this out. Should the task force. Recommend the Brandon Avenue plan amendment go forward. And this is Tom. I thought that we were going to have if it if there was a yes vote tonight, whatever we were voting on, that we would then go back and look at the five um, statements that right. the county put forward last week that we never got to last well, meeting. If 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 we vote to go forward here tonight, then we're going to come back at a future meeting and start drafting particular plan amendment language, which could include any reference to uh, community benefits that we wish to include. Okay. Okay. On the other hand, if we vote no tonight, then 
you know, the process stops, at least insofar as the task force is concerned. It, you know, it, it'll still go to the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors for their decision. But with our, rec you know, but they'll have our recommendation. Okay. So, um, <coughs> the question then is, should the task force recommend that the Brandon Avenue plan amendment go forward? Um, <coughs> so, I know it's a little unusual that I'm not taking that in the form of a motion, but, you know, our, our, our actual formal um, recommendation, you know, if it w would come at the end with the plan, the plan language or, but I guess we won't get there if, if we vote no tonight. I, I, I'm not sure what the right way to go about this is. I, I would propose that we just go forward with the question I posed. If anybody has an objection, uh, please, please state it now. I, I have a question for Dan. I, I guess I'm a, I would like to make sure I understand where we are in this process. I thought that the next vote that we had on this uh, was the, the vote that would pre precede the Planning Commission's recommendation to the Board of Supervisors on whether this plan amendment should be accepted or not. Well, it, the, the, the issue here, we, we have to kind of figure out which this vote tonight will tell us which direction we're going, but then if the direction we're going is to go forward, to recommend going forward with this nomination, with this plan amendment, then we still need to draft particular language to recommend. Okay. okay. On the other hand, if our vote is to recommend that it not go forward, then there's no need to draft plan language. Does, does that address your question? Well, then my follow-up question would be, if we were to vote against it going forward and the Planning Commission voted for it and the Board of Supervisors voted for it, for it where does the plan language get rewritten? Well, they'll, they'll write their own language. If we, if we okay. write plan language, if we, if we vote to go forward here, and then we write plan language. The, that plan language is just a recommendation. The Board of Supervisors, okay. the Planning Commission can decide to accept our recommendation or to not accept our recommendation. So okay. either way, we're not we writing it? the final product, but we are writing our recommendation. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I was clear as to where we were in this process. So the question I asked is, does anybody have any trouble with going forward to a vote on the, on the question I posed? That question reading, should the task force recommend the Brandon Avenue amendment go forward? Uh, um, and this is Laura Arsenault. Um, I've asked David yeah. to rewrite that question out so that we have it on the screen so everybody's aware of it. Um, and then um, when you take the vote, um, I'm not sure this is what you're planning, but to do a roll call vote so we can have. Oh, absolutely a roll call, yeah. yes. Thank you. So I'm not hearing anybody objecting to proceeding on that question. So, David, will you be, you'll be posting that on the screen in a moment? Yes, Ed, I will, I will be doing that. Okay, thank you. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. 
Uh, I was okay. suggesting so, putting the word task in the front of the word force. <laughs> I agree. Like force is yeah. going to be. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. I thought I thought it was a Star Wars reference. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, while we're changing, I would change does to should. But okay. Yes, I, I agree with that too. Okay, there's the question. Should the task force recommend the Brandon Avenue task or plan amendment go forward? So I will be calling the roll call in a moment. And I will ask you to answer, as I call your name, I would ask you to answer either yes or no. <clears throat> All right. Um, and, and by the way, uh, I, you know, I, I'm asking, you know, we, I'm sorry, is there someone trying to speak? I, I, I'm hearing some feedback or something. So please, everyone, mute yourself unless you're speaking. <clears throat> I would ask that um, as, as I call your names, you only vote if you are completely caught up on all our meetings regarding this plan amendment. So either you have attended all the meetings or if you have missed a meeting uh, that you went back and watched the video of that meeting. So please, you know, only vote if, if you've either attended all the meetings on this amendment or watched all, uh, them afterwards. So you have all the input. Okay, starting with the roll call. Uh, Robert Livingstone. No. No. I'm sorry, Robert. No. I, I, I cannot understand what you're saying, Robert. I'm sorry. No. It sounds like you're saying no. I think so, Robert. I, yes. You know, no. You're, no, no, there, no. There's some. Robert, can you type you're, that into the chat box so we can be sure what we're hearing? Yes, we're, it's not clear what we're hearing. So Robert, I, will you be type, please type, as, as John has suggested, please type it into the chat. And I'm getting the same feedback now from you. You're getting it from me? Well, I, I think maybe Robert needs to mute himself and then just type into the chat either yes or no. Uh, I just uh, helped Robert with the mute, so. Okay, Robert, we will come back to you. Uh, I'm not, I'm not seeing a vote from you. We will return to you for your vote. Uh, Carol Allen. Yes. Carol votes yes. Rand Pizza. Ram Pixa. Yes. Ram votes yes. Pamela Pinheros. Yes. Pamela votes yes. Leah Lamba Skidmore. Yes. Leah votes yes. Larry Dempsey. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Larry votes yes. Jeff Safel. No. Jeff votes no. Tom Rickard. Yes. Tom votes yes. Cindy Potter. Yes. Cindy votes yes. Rosemary Clay. Yes. 
Rosemary? Yes. Are you, is that your vote? Yes. You're voting yes. Yes. Okay. Rosemary votes yes. <coughs> Holly Doherty. Holly Doherty votes yes. Holly votes yes. Carl Sell. Carl Sell. Carl? I'm trying to, yes. Okay. What, I'm sorry, Carl, again, what is your vote? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What is your vote, Carl? Yes. Carl votes yes. Thank you. Marta Morrissey. Yes. Again, Marta? Yes. Marta votes yes. Steve Levinson. Steve votes yes. Steve votes yes. Tom Sachs. I'm going to vote yes, but only because I think the Board of Supervisors would go forward with it even if we voted no, and I'd rather control the process. <laughs> okay. Tom votes yes. Rachel Dexter. Yes. Rachel votes yes. John Tomko. No. John votes no. John Agag Gannon. John votes yes. John votes yes. Okay. Um, coming back to Robert Livingstone. Robert, we can try you with sound again if you like, or Please type either yes or no in the chat. Yes. You vote yes. Robert votes yes. Okay, that completes the roll call. We have 16 yes, two no, and no one abstained. So, okay, we're going to recommend that this plan amendment go forward and we will come back at a future date to start discussing specific plan language. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. All right. you. Are you done or can I just ask a point of clarification? Our meeting's coming up. If you're done with your meeting, are you done? <laughs> with the, uh, this is, this uh, is Laura Arsenault. Um, David has a couple just next steps um, and dates mm -hmm. for all of you. Um, so just give us two more minutes, I promise, and, and we'll be done. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Yes. Um, well, again, I want to thank I want to thank the task force for the vote, um, the discussion, and vote will be shared with Supervisor Lusk for his consideration. He will also consider staff input, and um, I was, at this time, staff does believe this use could be appropriate on the site, depending on the type of community benefits that are provided. Um, the slide before you outlines the next steps for this plan amendment. Um, so the next steps are the nominator will file a rezoning application, which will be based on on your feedback, as well as staff's feedback. After the um, rezoning is submitted, staff will draft plan text, and it will, it will, it will be reviewed by and voted on um, by the task force. And uh, the next task force meeting is um, January 24th, 2022. Um, after this process, the staff report will be published and it's anticipated they'll, they will be public hearings before the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors in the spring of 2022. Again, thanks for your time. Thanks, David. Okay, so as David just said, our next meeting is January 24th. 
will be hopefully going back to Van Dorn TSA at that time, um, assuming that the traffic study is done. And, uh, and then at some point after that, we'll pick up with discussing a uh, recommended plan language for, for Brandon Avenue. So staff will 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 draft us some some language. We can we can tweak what they've drafted. We can draft our own. We can, you know, in in the end, the recommendation, the language that we recommend will belong to us, the task force. Um, but we can, uh, you know, at least start the discussion with the. Uh, We lost your sound, Dad. Yeah, we lost it right after we can start the discussion. Uh, we can't we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Ed. Nor can we read your lips. Oh. Uh, we lost your sound, Ed. He doesn't show muted. He's not muted. He hangs on the telephone. He's, oh, no, that's not him that's on the telephone. Never mind. Anybody got a cell phone number? And, and check your laptop or your computer volume. But it's strange that it stopped in mid sentence like that. Yeah, it is. I'll call him. I'll, I'll text him. Hold on. Do, do earbuds have batteries? Do they go out <laughs> or, so, or something or? But Ed Joseph is showing up on the telephone, isn't he? And that's muted now. And if you're using two monitors, sometimes when you use WebEx and use an HDMI cable, it will cut off the sound. Whoever had a cell phone, maybe he can dial in on that number. See. There may be a way where he oh, can hello? set it up. Hello, we can we can hear you can now. You hear me now? Okay. Yep. I'm so sorry. I I don't know what happened on my end, but I, I'm doing the sound through my phone, and something happened where I, Steve, you you were talking. I could see your lips moving, and I didn't hear anything. I thought it was a problem on your end, but it was a problem on my end. I realized <laughs> I couldn't hear anyone. Thank God that happened after our business was completed. Um, I just was trying to thank everybody and, and say good night. So um, thank you all for your time and attention. And uh, we'll see you at the next task force meeting on January 24th. And uh, see many of you at the land use committee meeting on January 3rd. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs> and healthy. Yes. And have a good holiday and stay safe. Yes, absolutely. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Happy holidays. Good night.